Hi to all, how you are all doing? So in this video I would like to show you how you can impress your wife or for that matter your crush using only open source software and a 3D printer. So the first step uh, would be to buy one of those uh, cabin showers that uh, have only custom parts uh, that are uh, made uh, only once in a lifetime. Give it a bit of uh, use and you will see that uh, plastic parts will begin to snap uh, just like this. So. I uh, bought one of those uh, fine uh, equipments uh, and uh, no surprise, uh, plastic parts again uh, to fail on me. I thought uh, this would be a great opportunity to show you how you can um, design and uh, print a, a replacement uh, that would be otherwise uh, impossible to source from a hardware store. So the component uh, that uh, needs to be designed uh, and printed is this plastic plate uh, that makes possible for the shower head to be attached uh, to the shower wall. Luckily, this is a really well suited um, component for 3D printing because of the flat underside uh, that uh, it has. It is not a difficult uh, component to design and print. And uh, although I am using uh, Link Stage 3 for uh, FreeCAD Link Stage 3 for this video, you can easily do the same uh, steps uh, in uh, FreeCAD Master. So without further ado, let's get uh, right uh, into it. The first thing that we need to do is to snap a picture of our component and uh, fire up FreeCAD. So now I have the actual image uh, that I've taken uh, opened uh, inside my uh, image viewer and I will only rotate it left and uh, crop it. Now this image is um, good uh, as a reference but we will uh, use actual uh, measurements uh, taken from our uh, component. So let's start by firing up uh, FreeCAD and create a new file. Now that we have a new file created, we will move to the image workbench and we will uh, use uh, this icon to create a new image plane. And I will map it on the XY plane. Switch to the top view by pressing 2 on the keyboard. Okay, so now uh, knowing that uh, this horizontal dimension is 40.5 millimeters, what uh, I will do, I will use the scale image plane uh, icon to scale our image and I will type in the 40.5 millimeters. I will select the first point here and the second uh, point here. Type OK and our image uh, should be scaled uh, accordingly. Now using the workbench switcher I will switch to the part design workbench. With the part design uh, workbench opened what I want to do is to go into view and I will toggle the axis cross. I will select my image. I will go into view and I will give it a 50% uh, transparency uh, value. Now switching to data and expanding the placement property position. I will try to center my image uh, as best uh, as I can um, using as a reference uh, the, the axis cross. So I need to move my image slightly on the x-axis by 0.9 millimeters. And again, remember this is only a reference image. Uh, we will take actual measurements from our component. Let's create a new body. I will create a new sketch and I, I will map it on the XY plane. Let's hit OK. And the first thing that uh, I will do, I will use the toggle construction geometry icon and I will create a construction circle that it is tangent to the Y axis of the sketch. Right click to dismiss the tool. Let's select this construction circle and uh, by pressing R on the keyboard, I will give it a radius of 40.5 millimeters. Let's try to match it as best as we can with our reference uh, image. Now uh, what I need to do is to go ahead and uh, measure the whole height of uh, my component this dimension here at 51 uh, millimeters. So we have 51 millimeters. I will create a line that it is tangent uh, to my construction circle here and uh, tangent uh, also to the y-axis. 
right click to dismiss the tool let's select our line and give it a vertical distance of 51 millimeters i will select these two vertices and the cent center of our sketch and by pressing s on the keyboard i will make the whole drawing symmetric to the x-axis um, of our sketch with our sketch uh, still open, we can select our image plane, go into the model tab of the combo view, and we can alter uh, its position on the Y axis to ma better match uh, our sketch. So we will hit enter. Let's get back to our task, that is the sketching. What I want to do now is to create an outline of this area here of my component, and I will create a rectangle, and I can create a center re a rectangle so let's do it like this and this edge here is 31 millimeters in length 31 the height of this edge is 28 uh, millimeters so i will press i on the keyboard let's type in 28 millimeters and what i want to do is to make this vertex vertex here to tangent to this line here and we can use the tangency icon so something uh, seemed a bit off uh, here, uh, and this is why uh, reference images uh, are useful. This dimension here is actually 30 millimeters. As you can see, the fully constrained uh, construction geometry is highlighted in a light blue. Now with the main features uh, of our component um, outlined, uh, I will go ahead and hide for a, sec uh, for a second uh, image plane. You can do this in link stage 3 by hitting the eye icon or otherwise in um, Freaked Master by selecting uh, your image plane and uh, using the spacebar key. If you still have your geometry in construction uh, mode, uh, which is this mode uh, highlighted in blue here on your toolbar, you can uh, use this icon to toggle between uh, the two modes. I will uh, use the polyline tool and I will start by creating the outline of my component. And we have a fully constrained sketch. I will close my sketch and we will pad it for 3.4 millimeters. Hit OK and because we are uh, using uh, link stage 3 we can switch to the shadow mode and unhide our image plane. We can select our body, Ctrl D on your keyboard and we can give it a transparency if that can help us with the modeling and I will also change the color of the component. Now luckily for this print uh, sturdi uh, sturdiness, the, this uh, internal wall here doesn't uh, actually need uh, to be hollow and uh, we will take advantage uh, of that. I will create a new sketch, always on the XY plane, let's hit OK and by expanding the first pad um, tree branch I will uh, use a neat little feature of FreeCAD and we can actually carbon copy a previous uh, sketch. So I will select my previous sketch and as you can see I have a carbon copy of the outline of my component. Now uh, what I can do is to right click to dismiss the tool, select these edges here of my carbon copy and I will transform them in uh, construction geometry. Now I will use the polyline tool and by taking care of hitting the correct vertex here I will create the outline of uh, my uh, of my wall. Okay, always right click to dismiss the tool. I will select these two vertex uh, vertices, select the Y axis of our sketch, press S on the keyboard to make them uh, symmetric. This bottom line here needs to be horizontal and if we select it and press L on the keyboard, needs to have a 25 millimeters dimension. We have only one degree of freedom uh, left and this degree of freedom is this actual uh, vertical distance. We can constrain it uh, by using this icon and it is 24 millimeters. We have a fully constrained sketch. Let's close it. Zero on the keyboard to switch to perspective view and we will pad everything for 6.8 millimeters. Let's hit OK. Two on the keyboard for a top-down uh, view. And I will proceed at creating my centering uh, pins here. I will create another sketch on the XY plane. Now with our sketch more or less uh, defined, let's close uh, the sketcher. Uh, zero on the keyboard and we will pad it for 10 millimeters. 
Let's hit OK on the task panel and we're pretty much done. Now switch to the fasteners uh, workbench. If you if you don't already have the fasteners uh, workbench, it is enough to go into tools, add on manager, search for the fasteners uh, workbench and this install it. And I know that I have two countersink uh, flat head screws that I will uh, use. I will create uh, two of them, select them. I have an M3.5 uh, millimeters diameter and a 14 millimeters length. I will select my first screw, right click on the tree view voice. Let's transform it. I will rotate it and move it somewhere out of the way. I will do the same with uh, the other screw. Let's transform it, rotate it and move it somewhere out of the way. Hit OK. Let's switch to the top view. If we expand uh, the property placement of the second screw, we can see its position that uh, on the Y axis, we can make it somewhere, let's say 20 millimeters and we have one measurement. And if we select the other one, let's say minus five millimeters. And I think we are pretty much okay. Okay. Again, back uh, to our body. I will switch back to the part design workbench. I will create a new sketch, of course on the XY plane, let's hit OK. I will create two circles, let's switch to wireframe mode for us to be a little bit easier. So I want this to be tangent to the Y axis, this circle here and this circle here need uh, to be equal. I will make them a diameter, a radius of, let's select it, R on the keyboard for the radius of uh, 3.5 millimeters and I will select this vertex here in the center of our sketch and uh, if we remember correctly we have the first screw if I select it I go into the model at 20 millimeters so let's get back to uh, the task which is sketching I will again select nothing this vertex and this vertex here I on the keyboard for a vertical dimension of 20 millimeters instead this one and this one needs to be five millimeters distant if i'm not mistaken now with uh, this done i will close my sketch let's hide our two screws for just a second let's switch back to the shadow mode i will select my body ctrl d and i want to toggle off the transparency because i don't uh, need it anymore i will hide the image plane also and with my sketch selected I will use the whole tool. I want to close my display properties, yes. And as a profile, I want a ISO metric profile. I want a M3.5 millimeters. I want a wide fit. I want it to be reversed. And the whole cut needs to be a ISO 7046 if I'm not uh, mistaken. So let's try this. And just like this, we have the two holes for our screws. And if we unhide them, we see that we have a perfect fit. So with this done, we need to export our model in a, in a format that uh, the slicer can understand. So we need to export it uh, into a SETL format. But, bef but before we do that, uh, we need to, uh, to select our body. Let's uh, switch to the mesh design workbench. And by using this icon, we will create a mesh from our solid. Let's create our mesh. I want a angular deviation of five degrees. And uh, because our object uh, is uh, really small, we can use a 0 0.01 millimeters uh, surface devi uh, deviation and by hitting uh, OK FreeCAD will create uh, our body our meshed uh, object I can hide my body and by using this icon we can switch to flat lines display and examine how well our mesh detail is represented and uh, if we are happy with the result I will rename this body as shower component And by using the file menu, I will export it in a SETL uh, format. And with this, uh, the modeling part in FreeCAD is pretty much done. Take a look at our preview. And let's move to the printer. And 
and uh, here it is, the final result. We have a decent enough uh, print uh, that uh, didn't uh, fail on, failed on us and uh, luckily I didn't uh, have uh, any warping uh, which is typical uh, from ABS filament. I have a pretty good fit uh, of the two screws and uh, here it is next uh, to the place that uh, to the part that uh, it needs uh, to replace. Let's test it for the actual fit with the other component and quite a snug fit but I think it works uh, really really well. Thank you for staying till the end. Uh, if you like my work, please consider supporting me on the support channels that uh, you will find in the video descri description. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.